Hello dear students, welcome to this course of experimental techniques in physics for MSc Physics 3rd semester students and the subject code is SPT703. I would be your instructor. My name is uh, Dr. Rajesh Sharma. Before starting the uh, actual course and the contents of the syllabus, I would like to come to my introduction. So, uh, I have done my uh, PhD from the collaboration of DRD Jodhpur and Punjab University Patiala in 2006 and thereafter I have worked uh, in AICT affiliated institute uh, for about five years as a dean and a head of the department in various institutes and thereafter I have moved to uh, Germany and I was selected for a research scientist position over there to work on quantum cascade lasers and in 2014 and 17 uh, I moved to United States in the College of Optics and Photonics which is considered to be best institute in world. So let me come to the second point for about the brief achievements. I have uh, published about 110 research papers and the cumulative impact factor is about 140 and I have published in various journals like Journal of American Chemical Society, Applied Physics Letters, Optics Express, Nanotechnology and I am also planning to submit a paper to advanced material uh, in a high impact which is about 19 impact factor. So let me come to the second which, uh, the achievement part. So I have worked in as a team leader of various PhD and postdoc and master students in world's best institute in the field of optics and photonics. And thereafter, what I have done in 2014, we have established the record operating temperature about 119 Kelvin for the quantum cascade laser in CW terahertz mode, and which was featured in Euronews, Science Daily, and BBC newspapers. So, transferred technology to NASA and DLR. And I got National Science Foundation Fellowship uh, from Government of United States in 2014 and German Research Foundation Fellowship from Government of Germany in 2011. So let's uh, come to the next point about the contents. So the unit one, I would not go into the details of the syllabi for the unit one or unit two. So briefly, I would like to come to the next point, which is uh, the course uh, objectives. So what, what will happen that basically with the help of the uh, this uh, experimental techniques in physics course, our main problem is that we would look into the details of some materials that if we would like to have some images of some samples, then how to record the images. And the second problem is that if you have high resolution images, then how to work with these, how to work with these uh, high resolution images that we have to understand in detail in this case. So that would be the course objectives. And then we have course outcomes at the end of this lecture. Uh, you would be familiar with the scanning electron microscope studies that would be helpful for us to know that uh, how to apply and how to understand the instruments of this uh, chapter. So the outline of the presentation is, first of all, uh, we would like to introduce the electron microscopy. And then uh, what I would like to do that uh, we would like to come to the difference between the optical and electron microscope. And when we will be done with that, we will come to the experimental configuration of the SEM instrument. And finally, we would explore some references related to this topic. So the first question, which is that why do we need to have electron microscopy that we would like to address? So that would be our first priority in this case that uh, we would like to understand that what is the meaning of this, which is the introduction to the electron microscopy. So what I would like to do that I would like to pull up this. What happens in case of uh, the optical microscope? So you have the 
light which is coming and you would have a microscope objective and you would have the sample so it is objective so what will happen this will collect the light and directed onto the surface of the sample the light will be reflected back in this case and it will go to your eyes in this case so you would have your eye over here and you would know that what is uh, the detail and what is the image of the sample so now what will happen that in this case uh, the first question is that uh, which beam is incident the visible beam is incident and the second question is which beam is reflected so it is also the light from the sample which is coming out so that that is the thing so what is the aim of why do we need to have an electron microscope we would like to have images we would like to have images of the samples and what will happen that if we can record the images of the sample with the help of other microscopes why do we need to have electron microscope in this case that we have to understand in detail so let me introduce the two types of the material number one type of the material are the bulk materials bulk materials and the second materials are the nanomaterials so now uh, let's ask one question that what is the difference between the bulk material and the nanomaterial so that we have to understand in this case so the crystallite size or the particle size in the case of the bulk material is of the order of micrometers and we know that one micrometer is equal to 10 to the power minus 6 meters and in case of the nanomaterial the particle size would be of the order of nanometer and we know that one nanometer is equal to our 10 to the power minus 9 so one nanometer would be equal to 10 raised power 10 raised power minus 9 meter so with the help of the scanning electron microscope we can both image we can produce the images of the bulk as well as the nanomaterials so that is our main focus in this case that how do we understand the things and how do we uh, know about the images of different samples now let me uh, do one thing that uh, what we have done so far is uh, let me clean it up so if you come to this then in case of the paint and brush let me pull up new screen and this will be helpful for us so now let's come to the second point that what is the difference between the optical microscope and the electron microscope hmm? So let's uh, draw a difference I already told you that in this case the incident light will be so you would have the lens and then you would have sample this is lens the incident light is the visible radiation and in case of the similar situation would be there in case of the electron microscope so what will happen the incident light in this this case will not be a visible radiation but these will be the electron now question arises that why we are interested for an electron microscope we are having the optical microscope but we are interested about the electron microscope what is the need of the optical this electro electronic this uh, electron microscope when we have already the optical microscope so that we have to come across in this case so let's uh, understand that that i can understand that with the help of our next slide in this case so if you would like to come to the next slide then you would have this detail what i would like to do that here i would like to discuss about the abe's diffraction limit so in case of the optical microscope the resolution is limited by the abe's diffraction limit so what is this uh, diffraction limit in this case so that we have to understand so if you look into the details of this uh, Abe's diffraction limit we, we are interested to know about this one what is D here D is the optical resolution and lambda is the wavelength of the light and is the refractive index of the material and theta is the angle which is subtracted by the microscope objective onto the surface of the sample so what we will do that here 
uh, we are not talking about this one right now we are not interested about the second equation in this case so what i would like to do we are not going to consider this one so what we are going to do that we are going to consider only this thing that you have d is equal to uh, some value and then you would have lambda and 2 into numerical aperture what is numerical aperture it is the light gathering ability of the uh, microscope objective in this case so if you have a best microscope in that case what will happen you would have this numerical aperture value that would be equal to 1 so what will happen d will be around that will be equal to lambda by 2 so this we would like to explore that how to understand this so in case of the optical microscope uh, the visible radiations are incident onto the surface of the sample so what will happen that if you have uh, let's say that you want to increase the resolution of the optical microscope what will happen so d would be equal to if you are using the uv light like a willow light in this case then it will be 400 nanometer divided by 2 so you would have a resolution of around 200 nanometer so if you have something which is smaller than 200 nanometer you cannot explore that you cannot know about the fine details of that material which is less than 200 nanometer size so here what will happen your optical microscope that will fail in this case so what will happen that uh, you would have the optical microscope which would not work in this case so uh, we will see that okay how to uh, get rid of uh, this uh, optical microscope in this case no? so that would be done with the help of our next topic which we have discussed here no? so let me pull up one more thing in this case so you would have new slide okay let me get rid of this uh, easy draw and uh, so now uh, if you recall then what we have done that so far our target is the electrons in this case the electrons the wavelength of the electron that would be like d is equal to so it will let me it will be lambda by 2 no? so you want to make these lambda smaller you can with the help of the electron microscope you can make lambda as small as possible by accelerating the electrons so what you would have that if you would like to have much more detail of this then the according to de Broglie principle what will happen that your momentum is equal to lambda this is h over lambda every material particle is associated with a wave and this wave uh, that uh, has to be considered in this case so uh, what you would like to do that lambda will be equal to h over t and if you want to write in other way so what it would be that h over 2 m e under root okay? so you you can also write this momentum in terms of 2 m e so what will happen here if you increase the value of this uh, energy of kinetic energy of the electron in that case your lambda would be as small as possible so with the help of the electron microscope what actually you are doing you are making this uh, lambda as small as possible so lambda is small in this case hmm? so that we would like to if you have lambda small then automatically d would be very very small in this case so that's the basic concept why we are uh, requiring this uh, optical this electronic microscope instead of the optical microscope so let's go to the next point here we have discussed this in detail so if you look into the details of this one the scanning electron microscope so if you have much more details about this so you have an electron gun and this electron gun will produce the electron and then you have the first condenser lens spray aperture and second condenser lens deflection coils and backscatter detector and then ultimately your electron that will hit the sample and from here you have different events your electrons can be backscattered number one 
your electron can produce secondary electrons how they produce secondary electron that is also one of uh, the question that how do they produce the secondary electrons so that we have to understand in this case so this is entire if i would like to summarize this in terms of this uh, paint brush file then I, I can summarize that very quickly so what you would have here you have the electron so well we have left our discussion at the point where uh, we are familiar with the optical microscope uh, the basic principle of the optical microscope and what are what is the essential difference between the optical uh, microscope and electron microscope so now let's come to this point what we are talking about here about the instrumental setup i already told you that uh, the electrons are emitted from the electron gun and then you have sample and in between you have the optics with what it will do that most of the times the main aim is to deflect the trajectories of the electron beam so let me try to uh, make it a uh, bit uh, clear with the help of uh, this uh, simple uh, explanation so what will happen if you have uh, the important component what do you need to have in the case of the electron microscope you need to have one electron gun so that is the first thing you need to have because if we don't have electron then how we can scan a sample with the help of the electron so that is the first parameter and the second if you don't recall all the components then I will uh, say that okay these are uh, lenses no these are lenses are to direct the electrons from one place to the other place no? and then the third thing you need to have the sample sample and then after that uh, you need to have this the detector no? so these are the important things which you need to have so how does it work you have electrons which are coming from somewhere these are the electrons and then what will happen these electrons will hit onto the surface of the sample this is sample now what will happen that the electrons they are scattered in some direction and we need to have a detector for that detector D so overall what we are trying to do here in this case that electron how to produce the electrons that is uh, as simple because you the electrons are produced by the with the help of the thermionic emission from the tungsten filament so what you would have you would have a tungsten filament which can emit the electrons and once the electrons are emitted now our next task is to direct the trajectory because in normal cases uh, the electrons will be going in all the directions how to uh, define their trajectories these trajectories are defined with the help of the lenses and we have also to understand that what kind of lenses are these so if i pull up the this thing so it is written first condenser lens spray aperture second condenser lens deflection coil the final lens aperture then you have the, the all this stuff over there so these lenses if you we would like to make it clear that these are different from the optical lenses so normally what will happen if you would like to if you look at your hand sometimes there are some people those who tell future the pamis so that they, they have a magnifying glass okay and this is a kind of lens and this lens is <clears throat> basically an optical lens in this case you don't have the optical lens these will be the electromagnetic lens so we have to make it clear that these are not the optical lenses they are the electro electromagnetic lens so what will happen that what will happen in case of the electromagnetic lens that you apply the electric and magnetic field which can deflect the trajectories of the incident electrons uh, on uh, according to the principle that how much force will be exerted by the um, external electric or magnetic field on the charge carrier so that can be given with the help of the Lorentz law so then you have the sample and then you have the detector so this uh, the 
so the detectors so what will happen in case of the detectors that you would have the emitted electron now one concern remains that what will happen at this point at this point when the electrons they interact with the sample what type of the processes will be there so this will be answered with our next slide in this case so what we are right now what we are trying to do we are just uh, coming across this point which is uh, the we we would like to highlight this point in this case that what is happening in this case in the case of the sample when the electrons they are interacting with the sample so that's uh, come to that point in this case so let me pull up the next slide so these are the events what will happen here okay so the electron beam which is incident then there will be the secondary electron emission there may be also oj electron emission there is also a possibility of back scattered electron and then there is also a possibility that the incident electron produce the characteristic x-rays or then you have the quant these continuum x-rays and then the there is also possibility of cathodoluminescence and there is no transmission in the case of the scanning electron microscopy only these electrons which are either scattered backwards or at certain angles with respect to the sample surface they will be detected in this case so uh, if you recall that what uh, let's uh, take one by one what are the secondary electrons and uh, what are the oj electrons uh, we have different topics which are dedicated to these uh, electrons and uh, let me pull up the first thing that here you would have <coughs> the electrons they interact with the sample how they interact so one there is uh, the possibility of the back scattered electron the electrons which are scattered in the same direction these are due to the elastic scattering in case of the elastic scattering you know that momentum and the energy kinetic energy of the incident particle both are conserved so what will happen that in that case you would have the back scattered but you need to have a different detector in each case and in majority of the cases the secondary electron emission the secondary electrons which are emitted in this case the secondary electrons are responsible for producing the images okay these electrons secondary electrons are responsible for producing the images in case of the scanning electron microscope studies so what will happen that how these uh, secondary electrons are emitted let uh, me sh show you that okay what is inside the atom you, know, so you have the nucleus which contains protons and neutrons and then the electrons they are revolving around the nucleus you know. so there are definite shells like k shell everybody knows that at msc level so you would have k shell k shell l shell and then here you would have two electrons and then here you would have eight electrons okay eight electrons what will happen that incident electron can knock out one electron for example if the incident electron is coming like this then it may knock out this electron and this will be the secondary electron this will be the primary electron the itself the fundamental electron is the primary electron and then these are the secondary electrons which are emitted from the cells of these uh, structures so for example if you have the when there is a vacancy created in this cell this uh, vacancy because the incident electron they hit the uh, k shell electron so this electron will be knocked out producing this secondary electron then this vacancy can be filled by the higher cell electron so what will happen so you would have higher cell electron and then you would have emission of the characteristic x-ray in this case and sometimes these radiation they won't come but they will knock out the outermost electron in this case and these uh, electrons they are known as the the oj electrons because they are triggered by the characteristic x-rays which of course they transfer the characteristic x-rays they transfer their energy to the electrons in this case so that uh, we have uh, discussed in this case and then you have uh, the brimstolon means that okay the electrons when they are de-excited de-accelerated then you would have emission 
of this kind of electrons. Cathode all emissions means that okay, what will happen in that case? You can see that okay, if you the sample is uh, having this much penetration, then you have the cathode all emissions means that there will be some visible radiation which will be emitted during this process. So if you look, these are the systematically we have defined all the patterns of this uh, uh, this uh, the secondary electron emission how they are produced or characteristic X-ray. Systematically, the, these are the backscattered secondary electrons. These are the OJ electrons, and here you have X-rays which are emitted during this process and this all the things which we have during this process. So now when the this process is completed, uh, these type of images are produced with the help of the scanning electron microscope. So, but the second image which is there, so uh, these type of the images, for example, they, you can have a scale which will tell us the resolution of the particular, uh, particular sample that how you can resolve that sample in this case. So then you would have these type of the images which are produced in this case and then the final one is these are the references which we have used in this case and that's a question that can we analyze this image after looking at the lecture and the details given in the lecture are the students able to solve this problem. Uh, look at this image and look at uh, different points of this image. So what I would suggest first thing the first step would be that uh, you should look into the problem. So for example if you are looking look at the scale first thing is that look at the scale and once you are familiar about the scale you know 50 micrometer then you can know that what are the different components and what would be the resolution here. Okay? You can if you want to measure this distance from here to here, if you want to measure this one, then you can do that. Of course, that can be done with the help of uh, the the this scale. Okay, you put that equivalent scale, and then you will be able. There are different softwares also which are which uh, can be used to analyze the images. These are called the yes softwares. But right now we are not concerned at master level. We are just going to give you a small glimpse as how does it work. That we can direct. These are the references. And then you have uh, this uh, advanced study references. You can have this uh, information in this case. So you can have all the details in this case. So but what we have covered in this case, if you recall, then uh, we have just discussed that how does it work. Uh, introduction to the electron microscopy, difference between the optical and electron microscope experimental configuration of SEM instrument and references. So with the more study we can come to the next chapter. Thank you very much for listening and looking at this video. I hope that it will be helpful.